Hello, everyone. My name is Ben Gramico. I'm from InterNACHI. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. And we do free, live, interactive, online webinars, open to everyone. And we're doing a webinar today about pictures, inspection pictures and photographs and how many should you take and how relevant are the pictures and can you get in trouble with too many pictures or not enough pictures. So we're going to talk about inspection photos and a bunch of other things with my buddy Derek Palmaville from High Tech Home Inspection Training. Hi, Derek, are you there? I am here. It's good to see awesome. you, Ben. Good. Um, hey, Derek, how long have you been in business? Tell us a little uh, bit about yourself. Okay, I've been a home inspector since 1994. Wow. And yeah, just a little while there. Uh, and uh, I never thought I'd be doing anything that long, but you know, here we are nearly 30 years later. I've been teaching home inspection certification courses since um, 2003. So uh, about 19 years now that I've been teaching. So, and I love doing it. Love doing home inspections. Uh, love doing uh, um, uh, teaching, you know, because it's so rewarding to see what students can do with the stuff you give them. Absolutely. So thank you so much. You're one of our training partners and uh, we really appreciate it coming on uh, internet webinars and teaching us a little bit more about a few things. Why don't you start to share your slide and okay. we'll get right into the information. I want to remind folks that um, you should be able to see us. Uh, you can't, we can't see you. You should be able to hear us. We can't hear you. So if you wanted to ask a question to Derek, uh, feel free. I love it if you use the Q&A feature. There's a chat feature, but there's a Q&A feature. And you have your, if you have a really good question, we'll get to it at the end of the presentation. Unless it's critically important, I'll interrupt Derek. But um, you can also upvote uh, really good questions if you'd like. So feel free to ask questions during the presentation with Derek and I, and um, it'll be about 45 minutes or so. We'll go no more than an hour so that you guys can do uh, home inspections and make money. Uh, so Derek, I see your slide is up. Inspection photos, protection or apparel, please take it away. Well, thanks, really appreciate it. And uh, you know, a couple of things, you know, that I wanna start off with uh, when we get into this is that uh, I wanna start just quickly with a brief overview of what we're gonna be covering today. Um, so basically we're gonna talk about how are home inspectors, you know, taking photos and what are they using them for? Then we'll get into the various perceptions that a lot of people have about photographs and everybody sees things differently and we're going to talk about that we're also going to talk about perceptions that really matter and i don't mean that you know nobody's perception matters i mean there are some that matter a little bit more than others depending on what stage of that process you're in with the client uh, we'll talk about pros and cons we'll talk about how photos can help our business and how photographs can hurt our business and then i'm going to make some pretty from some pretty strong recommendations at the end okay and uh, the thing is uh, they're just recommendations. I'm not here to criticize anybody or the way anybody does business. Um, because for years, I've been taking photographs the way I take them because I was taught a certain way to do it. And through the years, I've learned through that whole trial and error process and constant discussion with my agents, how photographs are useful for everyone. But like many other areas of my business, um, there are home inspectors out there doing things differently than me. Uh, and especially when it comes to the number of photographs taken in their reports. So, um, like I said, I'm not here to criticize anybody uh, for their opinion or their personal history. Because I know that uh, as home inspectors, we have pretty strong opinions. And, uh, and that's perfectly okay. Uh, but there's a lot of opinions out there about how intelligent taking hundreds of photos on every inspection is. And there's not much information out there talking about anything else. So when I say that, I mean, I'm talking about internet, I'm talking about websites, I'm talking about videos. seems like everyone's promoting take hundreds and hundreds of photos. So we'll be discussing what I found to be the three basic opinions for how many pictures should be taken on a home inspection. Then we'll talk about how others see uh, those pictures after we've released the report to the client. And from there, we'll be able to talk about the perceptions that really matter when the waste collides with the rotary oscillator, you know, attorneys and judges, what are their perceptions? Uh, and this is where I'll present to you, Ben, and the InterNACHI members that are watching today, a very compelling case for how we can probably streamline our services a little bit, provide some top-notch services, best practices to the clients, and yet still protect ourselves from those frivolous claims and loss suits that we hear so much about. Does that sound good? Awesome. Sounds, All right. sounds real good, Derek. Thanks. All right, cool. Well, let's get started then. 
So, the history. I know I don't have to go into too much detail about this, because when home inspectors get together, we compare notes all the time. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's safe to say that we can basically put most home inspectors into one of three basic categories when it comes to taking photos in the report. And we're not talking about how we use the photos just yet, just how many we take. And it's been my experience when talking to other home inspectors that some folks are out there taking more than 400 photos in every inspection. And some guys use every photo, some of them don't. And then there's kind of that middle of the road group where, you know, I've read reports, students bring me reports on their own personal home inspections all the time. I've read thousands of them over the years. Um, and I've talked to home inspectors who say they average that 100 to 150 photographs uh, per inspection. My brother-in-law, he's one of those guys, a veteran inspection professionals in Phoenix, Arizona. I didn't teach him to do that years ago, but he takes about 150 photos per report. And then finally, there's inspectors who, like me, they only take about 10 or 15 photographs per inspection, okay? So understanding why we even take photos at all, that's easy. And that's because we're living in a digital, digital and a very, very visual society these days. We place a great deal of value on what we can see with our own two eyes, you know? Many of us don't, uh, I mean, how many of us, I should say, don't stream YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, you know, I logged into TikTok once. Uh, oh my gosh, I clicked through a few of those videos. Next thing I know, it's two o'clock in the morning, you know, uh, and I have to get up at six o'clock for an inspection. <laughs> so, you know, I just said, forget it. And I deleted the app. I can't look at it. That's how powerful those visual images can be, especially when you make it easy just to swipe go back and forth and they're just they're quick hits like that and we're drawn to the visual aspects of society because society bombards us with them okay it's not just TikTok and, and Hulu according to Brendan Kane in his book Hook Point in 1970 uh, I'm dating myself but you know this is 1970 when I was a little kid the average American was exposed to and saw about 500 ads per day Okay, whether it was billboard or magazine or TV or whatever, uh, radio, it was about 500 ads per day. Today, we're hit with as many as 10,000 advertisements in one day. And most of them, 85, 90% are visual. So there's two reasons for this. I mean, one, they can't because the internet is, just gives us that amazing reach. And two, because it's effective. You know, the best way to make an impression on someone for a product, a service, or for entertainment value is to show them that visual representation. So as home inspectors, we tend to place a lot of emphasis on taking photos because we're working so hard uh, to provide people information who are unlikely to understand those technical details or long-term implications. So we take those photos, put them in the report, and we kind of bridge that gap with them. And that's a wonderful use for photographs. Other justifications for taking photos, well, it'd be things like uh, agents want them. You know, we've all heard it, right? More pictures, more pictures. You know, um, and of course, everybody's favorite, I don't want to get sued, so I take more pictures, okay? Mm -hmm. So the burning question that I've been wanting to find the answer to for a long time, you know, especially since I became an educator, is do all these photos really help? And I know my agents love them, right? And I know my agents, uh, and con they give them to contractors, and I, know that I get fewer phone calls from contractors. But in 28 years as an inspector, 19 as an instructor, I've actually never been sued. I mean, my ex-wives have sued me, but let's not go there, okay? <laughs> um, so what I set out to discover last year uh, was to get answers to these questions. Um, one, why are home inspectors being sued? Two, how many photos do they take? How many go into the report? How many don't go in the report? Three, have there ever been any cases actually won based on photographic evidence? And then the last one is, have there ever been any cases lost because of that photographic evidence? I wanted to know. And what we learned may surprise a lot of home inspectors out there. I'm likely to stir up some powerful convictions here, uh, and I'm ready to take the heat, you know, because we've researched this extensively. I'm not saying perfectly, but we did a pretty extensive job researching this using legitimate resources from the legal profession. Okay. I've interviewed home inspectors from all over the country throughout my career as an inspector and an educator. Uh, I've also had the benefit of working with real estate agents now for nearly 30 years, constantly asking them for feedback and ideas. And not only that, when an agent tells me more pictures, more pictures, I always ask, how does that look? You know, how do you and your client benefit from more pictures? So as you may guess, 
I've managed to form a few opinions of my own. And the thing is, though, as an educator, I know I can't educate people in our industry with opinions. So home inspectors, we deal in the visual observations, the points of fact. So over the last several months, what uh, my wife and I have been doing is researching this topic, looking for answers to these questions so that we could find a platform to share them uh, with, uh, with home inspectors, give some real food for thought. And uh, knowing what works with the photographs all begins with gaining that understanding of how everyone involved looks at the photos, okay? Because everyone has a different perception. Brad Paisley, a uh, country western singer, he said it so well in one of his songs where he said, you see a priceless French painting, I see a drunk naked girl. Okay, everyone's got a different perception, you know, of what they're going to see. So anyone who's looking at the photo from the home inspector's report, they're almost guaranteed to have a different perception of not only what the photograph is, but what it means. Okay, and all too often when interviewing or even just having a casual conversation with other home inspectors, I learn how they're heavily focused on taking and revealing photos to the home, uh, the, to the, that to the home inspectors are perfect for the client. They're perfect for the agent, the seller, the contractor, and it's their best CYA tool. And unfortunately, there's little room in a lot of opinions, not everybody, but a lot of these opinions, these guys, uh, a lot of room, little room for possibility that there's something else, that others might have a different perception. And again, I'm not trying to be critical as much as I'm trying to show how most of us are really, really good at putting good quality photographs in the report for the buyers, for the agents, for the sellers to use. Um, but do we really understand all the perspectives? Do we really understand how insurance companies look at it? Do we understand how attorneys, judges, or even juries are going to interpret those photos? Our research actually said, no, we don't. So let's quick, quickly run through what we know about the various perceptions others have, and then we can get on to uh, the results of the research. When we review our reports from the home inspector's perspective, you know, before we click that magical send button in the email, the home inspectors of the world, we see a thing of beauty. You know, we see the hard work that we did to navigate, to explore, to research, uncover everything we possibly could about the house. The pictures, in our eyes at least, you know, are an obvious representation of what we're trying to say in the narrative. And that photo of the withered widget with the circles and the arrows, that's solid proof that the condition exists. And it's obvious how it needs to be fixed. Now, this is the perception of the home inspector. Uh, we think, tend to think, in the absolute and believe in our heart of hearts that no one can argue with such a work of art. Um, and I'm guilty of that every single day. You know, I look at my reports and I'm just so proud of them because they're so beautiful. Um, but what does the client see when we place that picture of the main panel or a water pressure gauge in the report? Well, surprise, surprise, they don't always see the same thing. Why? Because they paid us to translate what we know into something they can understand. So, for example, you're likely, uh, Ben and everybody watching, uh, to know what this is a picture of is a typical client's going to know what the home, what pro improper flashing is on a roof. Any guesses as to what it is? I think I had that for breakfast. <laughs> God, I hope not, because that's a human spleen. And, <laughs> and not only is it a spleen, it's a cancerous spleen. Uh. All that... Yeah, I know. It's kind of gross, but I'm trying to draw some contrast here. You know, uh, not only is it a human spleen, but yes, that's cancer on the top, uh, that bubbly looking stuff. And none of us expect anyone here to know what this is. Uh, and that's not the point of showing it to you. I wanted everyone to see from another perspective how others can see something entirely different than what we intended. You know, and more evidence to this in a little bit. So what about the agent? You know, we all know how the agents look at it, right? We've learned this one through experience. Agents look at that picture, uh, or they grab the report, they find the summary, um, then they complete the request for repairs uh, to submit to the seller. The next job, get bids for the work. And all they want to do most of the time is just grab that photograph, show it to the contractor, and say, how much? You know, um, the agent, like the client, is not a subject matter expert when it comes to home inspections. We all know agents don't want to be subject matter experts. Uh, photos make their lives easier, even though they never even look at them, you know. But that's not the point. They don't want to learn anything from it. They don't want to read the report. They just want to say, here, Mr. Contractor, how much is this going to be? And what about insurance companies? What are they going to see? Well, plain and simple, insurance companies see an opportunity to save money. Okay, um, I spent several years as an executive vice president of operations for an insurance company, property and casualty insurance company. I have a pretty deep understanding of how insurance processes work. And insurance companies, they're on your side. 
They have to be. It's written in the policy and it's state law. And when there's a claim, they'll handle it according to the terms of the policy. You know, a lot of us tend to have that perception insurance companies are out to get us. They're really not. I mean, they are on our side, but they are about saving money because insurance companies just like us, they're in business to make money. So uh, once we turn it over to them, they can handle it any way they want. Okay, and they don't have to involve us. You know, uh, and that's why I love a lot of the services offered by a lot of uh, home inspectors, errors, and emissions insurance companies like the pre-claims assistance, you know, where they can help diffuse a lot of these complaints before they become a lawsuit, before they become a big claim. Those are great services um, to, to have at our fingertips. But once they have it as an official claim, there's little consideration for who's right or wrong. Okay, and it becomes more about how cheaply they can resolve the issue. Litigation in the courts is always the last option because it's the most expensive. Oftentimes, when it's, uh, when it's clear that someone has a legitimate chance at winning a lawsuit, right or wrong, the insurance company might just pay it because it's so much cheaper than it is to fight it. Okay? And, but when they have a stack of photographs and they can use them to apply a technique known as intimidation, and I don't mean that in a negative context. I mean, you know, it's intimidation. You give them enough photos, they can go back to the client on your behalf. And they're going to show dozens of images proving the home inspector didn't make a mistake and that there's no way they could win a lawsuit. Therefore, no money, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer. Well, the insurance companies, you know, that's the cost of an administrative person on the phone for a couple of hours tops. That's a lot less than twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars for a claim. Um, and it works. The reason it works is because of that societal perceived value of how a picture paints a thousand words. <laughs> the question is, what words? So what about people going to court? Okay, and this is where you know we really get in the meat and potatoes of what we research. How do the people in the legal world see our photos? I mean, surely, whoops, there's got to be enough people. Didn't mean to do that. Surely there's got to be enough intelligent people in the legal world to be able to look at our photos and they're capable of seeing what we want them to see, right? Not necessarily. See, in the legal profession, it's the attorney's job to interpret the photos and then do something with them. And once they open up your report, they may as well be looking at a report full of cancerous spleen pictures. You know, because they have they have neither the desire nor the time to become subject matter experts on home inspections, just like real estate agents. And furthermore, they know a judge and a jury are likely to see the same gooey looking anatomy, you know, when they walk into court and they start putting pictures into a giant monitor in the courtroom. So the judge wants to know why a cancerous spleen is bad. OK, that's all he wants to know. He doesn't want to see all these pictures. Just tell me why a cancerous spleen is bad, okay? Um, so the home inspector's attorney is gonna uh, look for the most single, most relevant photo that they can use to tell their story, and then that's the one they're gonna use to win the case, okay? For the other side, well, they want that one picture that shows that a cancerous spleen is bad, it's making a person sick, and it's your fault, okay? In other words, attorneys want that one picture that will either exonerate you or bury you based on which attorney is looking at the pictures. And what I believe to be true for the last 20 years or so that you know I've been putting pictures in my reports is how photos rarely ever see the light of day in the courtroom. And that's based on my insurance experience, okay? And when they do, they just won't help that much. But again, that was based solely on personal insights and experience in the insurance world, uh, observing legal cases, you know, my job as an executive. But we have to remember how our profession is still very new to the rest of the world. Okay, so maybe photos are more likely to make it into court because, um, I mean, you look at uh, the legal world, they've been around for thousands of years. That industry has literally been evolving since man could write. Okay, uh, home inspections, we've only been around for about 100 years. So, as smart, capable, intelligent as we are, home inspectors may not be able to outsmart the legal industry. Uh, and it seems like some of us are trying to do that by taking hundreds of photos. Okay, we take them believing they'll provide the evidence everyone needs. Uh, so they won't even even file a lawsuit, okay? So after having seen the perspective of judges and attorneys, which is it, okay? Now that we know how everybody sees the pictures, will dozens, if not hundreds of photos make the difference? Or are, and are we really covering our collective and individual backsides with all of the photos? Well, as much as I value my opinion, I'm gonna share with you some facts, okay? I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how we did the research. Uh, my lovely and talented wife, Becky, she recently graduated from Northwestern University with honors and she got her Juris Doctorate. So she has her degree in law. And with her knowledge of the law and access to the research, we were actually able to use resources commonly reserved only for attorneys and paralegals. 
Uh, we went through the Lane County uh, Law Library in Eugene, Oregon, and we were able to use a service called Westlaw that accesses all of those databases called the Lexis Nexus databases. I'm not sure where they got that name, but it's pretty fancy. Uh, and it's basically a combination of over 40,000 databases of legal cases from around the country, both state and federal for over the last 200 plus years. We searched for cases involving home inspectors, photos, pictures, or photographs. And what we found might surprise some of you. Uh, of course, it might affirm some others, too. Uh, when we started the research, the last thing we expected was to encounter a lack of uh, legal cases involving home inspectors and photographs, but that's exactly what happened. Uh, when we searched for cases with home inspectors and photos, and only one case came back, well, we added the word photograph, then we added picture, and then we tried all three <laughs> in the plural form. Um, and amazingly enough, there's no, while there's no shortage of legal cases involving home inspectors, there just weren't that many to find where a case relied on photographs and none we could find where a court actually decided the case based on photographic evidence or even where the photos weighed heavily in the decision. And that was a real surprise. So as I'm sure you're already guessing, you know, or you've already guessed, I'm sorry, that you know, we ask ourselves, why? Why is that? You know, why are these photographs not carrying all that weight? Um, well, the answers lie in three basic foundational principles and rules in the world of litigation and law, okay? It's relevance, interpretation, and the federal rules of evidence. And they're used in every court across the United States, okay? Relevance is the first thing an attorney's gonna question regarding any evidence, uh, and including the pictures provided by the home inspectors. So it's usually a simple argument too, because unless the evidence is relevant to the exact thing being argued, it will likely be dismissed and never seen or considered by a judge or jury. When a photo is less than perfect, when it isn't clear uh, and a, not a perfect exact uh, representation of the condition noted, picture of a leaking hose bib from 15 feet away, for example, then that tiny little water droplet on the end of the hose bib from 15 feet away may as well be a picture of a cancerous spleen. It's not relevant. It's not going to be considered. It could actually get dismissed. Now, the picture doesn't even have to be a bad picture to be dismissed as not relevant. If the judge or jurors can't be made to see the drop of water at the end of the hose bib as proof of a leak, well, then the photo is not relevant. It's going to get dismissed. And somehow you'll have to prove that photo is evidence enough to support your position that the hose bib is leaking. And that's kind of hard to do in a static photograph. So when we interviewed attorneys regarding hypothetical arguments, they shared with us a couple of other arguments that I had to put in here and share with you uh, that they either have used or they say they would use uh, in court regarding photographic evidence. So for example, if a home inspector would take dozens of photographs of wood rot around the outside of the house and only two pictures on the roof, because there's not a whole lot wrong with the roof. An attorney says, well, let's just ask the inspector right in front of the judge and the jury, why weren't they as thorough on the roof as they were at the exterior siding and trim? Okay, now to all of us, well, that's an unfair question. I get it, but and it's a simple argument for us because there may not have been as many defects on the roof to talk about, but in litigation, it's not about how many defects on the roof versus the siding. It's about relevance. And if they can damage your credibility, then your photos may still be relevant, but they won't be trusted. They'll be trusted a lot less and they could actually hurt you. So when home inspectors take a plethora of photos and only put some of them in the report, that's a big one. You know, I know a lot of home inspectors do that. They say, well, I just take a lot of extra photos and I don't put them in the report unless I need them later on down the road. We do it thinking that, you know, we might need it as proof at a later date because we've had that angry phone call in the past. You know, I've been able to do that. I look at something, oh my gosh, I've seen that before. When that happens, oh my gosh, it turns into a big mess. So you take a picture you, and you just say, well, I'm not going to use it, but I'll hang on to it. Attorneys, they tell us that can be a bad strategy uh, because they make it, they can make it look like uh, the home inspector had something to hide because he held on to pictures of the property without sharing them at the time of the inspection. And again, that damages the credibility of the inspector by implying an intent to hide something from the client and the photos won't be trusted nearly as much. So let's take a look at a couple of rules of evidence too. Now these rules of evidence always apply uh, and can be used uh, uh, towards you know, uh, submitting evidence or you know, getting it dismissed. Uh, one of them is uh, Federal Rule of Evidence 401, make the existence of fact more or less probable than without the evidence. So basically uh, what we're saying is that um, you know, a poorly dressed person, for example, in need of a bath walking down the street is not enough evidence to prove they're in fact homeless. Okay? Uh, they could just be having a really bad day. Okay, so that's Federal Rule of Evidence 401. Um, and uh, in the case of uh, De Leon versus Gallagher, uh, first of all, what I want to say is we should remember that these were the only cases we could find. We found literally less than 10 where photographs had anything to do with the outcome. 
now, it's not that there's a shortage of lawsuits. They're out there. Just the photographs don't weigh very heavily. So uh, most of the photos referenced actually in these cases came from the plaintiffs, you know, the clients suing the home inspector. In De Leon versus Gallagher, uh, the home inspector was sued for misrepresentation for missing some significant deficiencies to the structure in the crawl space. So basically there was an addition that was built on uh, the house improperly, garage beneath, livable space above. And a structural engineer was brought out later and found the roof and the floor structure to be inadequate. In other words, that addition was built improperly. And the client showed their photos uh, to the court of a sagging ridge line to prove the, the point that the structural engineer said there should have been collar ties and a bigger beam underneath. So it should have been collar ties up, bigger beam down, here's the photographs. And the client also, and I found this one to be pretty interesting too, that they were able to prove how the home inspector, after the fact, after the home inspection, inserted a disclaimer of liability into the contract and forged her signature to reduce his liability on this one. I would never recommend that practice. I couldn't believe it when I read it. Okay, so home inspector, I mean, that is, for, to a lot of us, okay, that guy's got something to hide. You know, maybe he knows he missed it. But the court looked at the client's photos and they basically said, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see a sagging ridge line, and I don't know what that means. That's what they, they did with that photograph. They refused to consider the forged signature in the outcome. Why? Because a poorly dressed person needing a bath isn't necessarily homeless. He forged the signature, but that's got nothing to do with missing the deficiency underneath in the crawl space because he had written the limitations in his report that there was uh, vaulted ceilings upstairs and that the beam was enclosed in sheetrock in the crawl space okay um so there's um federal rule of evidence 803 industry standards are relevant evidence of what reasonable conduct is okay so that means in the legal world our standards of practice especially when they're a matter of state law but they don't have to be state law um, uh, to be relevant because they're recognized industry standards and courts use this a lot. Um, so in the case of De Leon versus Gallagher, the home inspector, he brought in an expert to testify, here's what the standards practice are, here's how I met them. And the court said, that's great evidence. And even though the photographs were introduced, uh, the courts found for the home inspector because he adequately inspected the home uh, and he adequately documented the limitations about being in the crawl space. So even though the home inspector did some pretty shady stuff, he still got off the hook, okay? Federal Rule of Evidence 901, someone must testify the photo's an accurate depiction of the scene where the issue lies. That, that means basically, photos require authentication. Photos do not stand on their own merit. You gotta bring somebody else in to verify that it's a real photo of the exact problem for that house. And it has to be very precise. This case uh, uh, called uh, Milner versus Big. Uh, Biggs. Uh, home inspector's access to the crawl space really severely limited due to fallen insulation and duct work uh, in the crawl space. He, the home inspector noted in the report that he couldn't get very far into the crawl space. Uh, he documented the crawl space appeared to be dry at the time of the inspection. And uh, so the buyers asked the sellers to fix the duct work and the insulation in the attic, and the seller agreed. Weeks later, they're moving in. Uh, new homeowners, they found a soft spot in the floor. So that prompts the husband to go down in the crawl space, take a look, where he discovered rotted floor structure, uh, joists and uh, uh, beams, I believe, and uh, subflooring structure. So since the house was now vacant, they were able to see a lot of wall surfaces too. And guess what? Oh, there's mold. You know, there's mold on the walls where moving boxes and furniture had all been stacked up against the wall prior to uh, moving out. The buyers sued the home inspector for missing the rotted floor structure, the mold, and the water damage in the attic. Uh, they also found water damage up in the attic. Okay, clients had photos uh, of a rusty staple in a piece of plywood in the crawl space uh, and at the beam. Um, and the judge gave him very little credence because he had no idea what he was looking at. There was no way to know that that picture was taken actually in the crawl space. Although it was a great picture of the deficiency, it, there was no proof, there was no verification that it was from that crawl space and that it meant anything bad. So photos showing deteriorating beams in the crawl space, uh, but judge still admonished the plaintiffs. It's actually on record. He admonished the plaintiff's counsel uh, on how the better practice would have been to authenticate those photos. So basically, they came to court with a picture of a cancerous spleen and said, here's a problem with the electrical panel. Okay, uh, And again, courts ruled in favor of the home inspector. So witness testimony, this is a big one. It's even more compelling than a photograph. Uh, in Kelly versus Benedict, and this happened in Texas, and I think this one was 2019. All of these were all in the last 10 years, by the way. Uh, the home inspector was sued 
for missing termite damage at the floor structure in the crawl space. Uh, within months uh, of the client moving in, uh, they found uh, drywood termite frass in a couple of places inside the house. Uh, so the sellers, the agents, termite inspector, the home inspectors were all named in the lawsuit because they had people come out and say, oh, yeah, your home inspector is a moron. He should have caught that. You know, So they sued. Uh, and they introduced the seller's photos uh, in, to prove that there was termite damage in the crawl space. They took the photos, though, two years after the home inspection. The home inspector took no photos. He made no mention of any damage to the floor structure in the report. And this is the big one, okay? Because we look at this and go, yeah, that's why I take pictures, to prove there was no problem, okay? The home inspector testified how he didn't remember seeing any damage. He testified that had there been damage, he would have noted it in the report. And both the home inspector and the termite inspector testified how frass looks a lot like sawdust and dirt. It's kind of hard to recognize when you're crawling around a dirt floor to crawl space. The judge ruled that the clients failed to prove with their photos how the evidence existed, period. Um, and uh, it was it, it, in existence, present and visible at the time of the home inspection. He said, there's no way that I can tell that from your photographs. They took their pictures two years after the home inspection, and the court allowed it because there was an expert to authenticate it, um, but it didn't help. Why? Because of the testimony of the home inspector and the termite inspector. So the testimony, the witness testimony beat the photograph, the client's photographs. That and the fact that the photographs were two years old. So if the pictures aren't really going to help us in court, okay, um, can, can they help us in everyday business operations? Well, I think most of us already know the answer to that one. Because uh, you can't be a home inspector very long before a client calls you up and says, yeah, I didn't read your report until just now. <laughs> and in the case of Milner versus Biggs, uh, the case where the home inspector couldn't access the crawl space, the buyers admitted in court they didn't read the report before closing. Okay, so we know that to be true. You know, and people come to us after the fact. Would photos in that report have prevented them from suing? Probably not. So even if the home inspector had taken a bunch of photographs, he'd still been sued. Okay, because they eventually did read the report, report and they didn't care. They didn't care what they saw. And after reading the entire case, I got the feeling the Milners were unreasonable. You know, they weren't about to listen to anything short of a promise of a victory in court. You know, uh, and I realize here, too, that it just may not be possible to take enough photos to satisfy that unreasonable client. And when dealing with reasonable people, sure, a photograph, very likely to make them think uh, twice about, you know, calling you to complain uh, when there's something they're upset about, you know, because it's that societal perception of the photograph. As long as people are willing to spend money to sue someone else, there'll always be an attorney willing to take their money and go for it. Now, I'm not saying that attorneys are crooks. That's not what I'm saying, okay? And I know it can easily be translated. I'm saying if somebody's got 450 bucks and they've got a building that's a foundation, four walls and a roof with some electrical, plumbing, and mechanical in it, I'm there, man. You know, I don't care what they're going to do with it. If they want to pay my fee, I'll give them the report, and I'll do a, the best job I can possibly do. You know, and I don't think attorneys are any different. They're in business to make money just like we are. So um, as long as people are willing to pay for it, they'll always be, find, be willing to, uh, they'll find a, an attorney willing to take the case. So looking at that Milner versus Biggs, the buyers clearly had very little to go on justifying suing anyone. Um, but they wanted to try. They found an attorney willing to take the case. Starts with a letter. Always goes from there. What happens? Anybody's guess. But if you had photos, you're still going to get the letter from the attorney. And you could still very easily end up in court. Okay. So, yes, they're a great deterrent. Okay. Uh, I totally agree with that. Um, but is it going to work in court? And the answer to that is probably not. Okay. Um, there's also the benefits of courtesy. You know, I, I learned a long time ago, um, you know, that uh, I get fewer phone calls from agents, sellers, and contractors when I have the right kind of pictures in there. There's the safety, you know, and this is where I take pictures. I tell clients, don't follow me up the ladder to the attic, uh, or into the, uh, onto the roof, into the crawl space, uh, into the electrical panel in the furnace. That's where my pictures come from, you know, because those are areas where I don't want the customer to go and they can't see the deficiencies for themselves. And when agents started telling me years ago, I mean, from the very first time I handed a report over with pictures in it, agents have been telling me more pictures, right? But because I have, you know, a, a corporate background, I learned a long time ago in corporate America, you don't just take anything literally. You ask more qualifying questions. So I asked, how does that look? How do you and client, your clients benefit from more pictures? And as it turns out, they wanted more pictures so they could talk less to contractors and home inspectors. So when I, that's when I started adding images to my reports showing right next to the defect the right way to do things. And I used images like the ones that are available on InterNACHI's website. You know, they show you all the proper ways to do things. You put that right next to the defect, 
that's a lot fewer phone calls and realtors and agents are very happy. You know, because that way the realtor can go out to the contractor and say, home inspectors say this bad. Home inspectors say that good. You make good. How much? And they're done. You know, that's what they want. Insurance companies, their job's easier and cheaper when, they, cheaper when they've got those pictures to intimidate with, right? Um, they can do it over the phone. They can send them a few emails with the pictures, and they'll say, we have documented evidence proof right here in our offices. And they pay out fewer claims, and they save money, okay? That's how pictures benefit. So when your insurance company is asking for more pictures, it helps to understand why they want them. It helps you make a better, more informed decision as to why you're taking those pictures, okay? How can pictures hurt the business, Okay. Well, an easy argument attorneys make uh, against photos for relevance, deficiencies in the picture that wasn't stated in the report. We saw that quite a bit, too, uh, in some of these cases. Uh, they never actually made it to court. Um, the insurance company settled it, you know, because we researched some of these claims. Um, fo my photo looks better than your photo. You know, uh, now you got that he said, she said. If they can argue enough to say that mine's better than yours and the other people say, no, mine's better, they'll just toss them both out rather than argue about it. Um, so if your photo's not clear, if it's blurry, if it's too close, if it's too far away, that's how they can hurt. You know, my uh, brother-in-law, um, uh, he, he owns uh, Veteran Inspection Professionals in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, he's been doing home inspections for 20 years. Um, and a couple of years ago, he did a home inspection for an agent on a house that she was buying. It's standard practice for him to take a picture of the electrical panel with the dead front off. And they just put that in the report and say, here's your panel. Um, and I used to ask him, why do you do that? He says, well, it looks good in the report. Says, okay. Well, last year, uh, he says, you're never going to believe this. He says, my guy, Barry, he went out and did a home inspection today. And it was for, uh, that home that, uh, for a home that the agent bought a year ago. And I did the inspection. Barry found double tapping in the panel, took a picture of it, put it in the report. Realtor calls me and says, you missed it a year ago. Shame on you. You got to pay to fix it. And apparently it's a couple thousand dollars worth of electrical issues that needed to be repaired that were uncovered once somebody dug in the panel a little bit further. We all know that story, right? So Mark just went back to the original reports from a year before, showed the picture of the electrical panel and said, gee, puts two pictures side by side. No double tapping here, double tapping there. The realtor swore up and down. She never had anybody work on the panel and nobody went in that panel in those 12 months. Well, somebody had to. And he had the photographic evidence. And that helped, okay? So I can see that. But how many of us, I mean, he's been taking pictures for 20 years, right? And he always puts a picture of the electrical panel. That's the only time that's ever come in handy. Okay. So you kind of have that, how much effort am I putting out there for something that, you know, is clearly not my problem, you know, and I didn't do it and screw it up. So from this story and reaching all these, or researching all these cases, it appears that some of what I've been doing over the years is a great idea. Some of what I've been doing isn't necessarily as good as I thought. And some of it might only help once in a while. It may not be worth the effort. Okay, so there's two key takeaways, actually three, um, that uh, we want to take away from all this. And we're probably already profoundly aware of them, but it helps to think about this in terms of photos, okay? Um, because sometimes we forget of what these key, key takeaways are, and we try to enhance our report through the use of photos, enhancing the CYA tools, if you will, um, and maybe we're not enhancing them all. So the first one, the first key takeaway here uh, is going to be own up to your mistakes, okay? Now, you see that all over InterNACHI's website. You see that all over a lot of other home inspectors' websites. You make a mistake, no amount of documentation or photos are going to save you from having to own up to it, okay? Um, and that's what the standards of practice are for. Standards of practice protect us and the consumer, okay? Um, and they level that playing field so that we're less likely to get unreasonable claims. And when we do, we've got something to back us up. And that's what the standards of practice is for. But if you make a mistake, because we have standards of practice, you can't hide it. You know, um, doesn't mean you win, doesn't mean you lose. And I see here in the Q&A, we got a question from uh, Lawrence. Uh, he's asking about thermal images. And I think thermal images, we can apply the same rules to. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So I promise to get to that. And uh, forgive me if Lawrence isn't your name and you're, you know, using your sister's computer or something. And her name is Lawrence. That's the only name I've got to work with there. So, <laughs> um, so you make a mistake. It's going to be readily apparent. Two plus two is not five, but you can see the person wrote it down that way. Pretty tough to argue with that one when it's written down, right? Second key takeaway from this, the burden of proof. It's another reason why photos haven't had much impact on the cases that we found from the last 15 years or so, okay? Even with so many home inspectors taking pictures of limitations in the report, 
and this is where I want to talk about, it's silly to take pictures of limitations. Okay, now just stay with me here. We take photos to prove everything, or we take photos to prove nothing. Okay. And what I mean by that is we take picture of every deficiency so we can prove every deficiency that we found. Some of us take photos of every limitation so we can prove we couldn't see or access something. So essentially, from a legal perspective, we're taking pictures of nothing. Okay, Keep that in mind as we go through this. Um, taking pictures of limitations to prove why you didn't do something isn't really necessary because you don't have to prove that to anyone. When something is not in the report, it's because there was nothing to say, okay? And otherwise it would have been in the report, kind of like what we talked about in the earlier case where the home inspector said there was nothing in the report because there was nothing to say, right? The courts are not going to require you and I to prove our innocence in a civil court any more than they do in a civil or a criminal court, okay? So the burden of proof is on the person suing you uh, and they have to prove that you did something wrong, okay? They have to prove you missed it. Okay, we don't have to prove our innocence. The other party must prove our guilt. So remember that when you're taking pictures, you know, am I doing this for burden of proof? Well, the burden isn't on you, so maybe you don't need to take that picture. Okay, so what about pictures of deficiencies? You know, we should take pictures of every single one, right? Without photos, client can't see the deficiency. Uh, they can't possibly know that it exists. Well, some home inspectors we've seen placing, you know, how-to videos on YouTube, stuff like that. You know, they say, uh, some of them even say they take pictures in place of the narrative because they don't write well. So they just take pictures of stuff. Well, I'm here to tell you that without all the documentation and without authentication to back them up, those photos don't mean anything. Okay? And they will be dismissed if you ever get to court because they're not relevant. Remember the cancerous spleen photo, right? So remember when I said how the legal profession has been around and evolving over the last few thousand years? Well... Since the written word was invented, man's been putting contracts in writing because it's the best way to prove what was agreed to later on down the road. The written word is so powerful. Men have been hanged for just having signed a document. Let's take that Declaration of Independence, right? Uh, for example, the uh, document in its most basic form, you know, you could look at it as just nothing more than a piece of parchment paper with ink that was, uh, you, you know, they used a bird feather to write it down. Okay. Pretty primitive by modern standards, wouldn't you say? But it wasn't the fact that it was parchment paper and ink, okay? Uh, our founding fathers put it in writing to show the king their resolve to have freedom from a tyrannical government. All 56 members of that Continental Congress lost all of their wealth because they signed it. Five were captured and tortured to get copies of it. Um, I forget how many, I think it was like six others that got hanged. Why? Because for thousands of years and to this day, the written word is considered sacred truth until someone can prove otherwise. Taking photos to compensate for a lack of ability to get your point across in writing could turn out to be a disaster. Always back up your photos with documentation. And in every single one of the cases we studied, the home inspector won or lost based on documentation. Every single one of them, okay? In nearly every case, the written report was referenced multiple times. Uh, in nearly every case, the written re report was compared to the standards of practice, either whether they were state law or organizational standards of practice. What was written in the report carried more weight. It weighed more heavily in the court's decisions than the photos every single time. So in that case of Milner versus Biggs, the court compared the unauthenticated pictures from the plaintiffs uh, to the documentation of the home inspector and the standards of practice. They ruled in favor of that home inspector. In both the inspector's report and the standards of practice, documentation is what justified the inspector's lack of ability to inspect the crawl space because of the hanging uh, insulation and ductwork. Um, so I guess this means that the folks who wrote the standards of practice, including organizations like InterNACHI, kind of knew what they were doing when they wrote them. Um, and the states that have adopted them into law, they kind of understand and recognize the importance of them uh, because they're referenced more than any photos we could find mentioned in any of the legal cases. It always came down to documentation. So that's what we've all been doing for decades, you know, and so far, nothing's proven to be better than our written report paired with a good standard of care like the InterNACHI standards of practice, okay? Um, and we have to remember, kind of a new a new thing, you know, relatively speaking, 15, 20 years, digital photos in the reports. So what are we recommending? Okay, this is where we kind of put it all together. Uh, I'm not an attorney. I can't give you legal advice. All I can do 
uh, is uh, research. All I can do is study everything I can get my hands on, okay, and share it with you. So nothing I'm saying here is a substitute for legal advice from an attorney, especially when you have a complaint, a claim, or a lawsuit, okay, and of course your insurance company. Uh, you know, programs like Joe Ferry's service, are, they're wonderful services. They take the burden off of dealing with these issues. You know, they take on that burden, they write the letters, they respond, and they can really help you out with stuff like this. Um, and I like those services, okay? And, you know, it, even Joe Ferry says, you know, the documentation, standards of practice, you know, and then he talks about photographs on his website. And as far as recommendations go, I'll tell you what I've learned, tell you how I'm going to move forward, you know, after having done all this research. Because I came into this whole research thing with some preconceived notions. Well, I'm still going to do about 10 to 15 inspection photos, okay? Um, I'm still going to just take pictures of deficiencies in an area where the customers can't go, okay? Um, I don't want the client to go on the roof, the attic, the crawl space, etc. cetera. Um, and those pictures are useful because the client can't readily see them for themselves. But I'm not going to take pictures of trip hazards and wood rot that they can walk up to and see themselves. It's not relevant because I'm going to document it in the report. Uh, I don't think I'll be taking any pictures that I don't intend to put in the report. You know, because that seems to get more people in trouble. And I do this, and I do all of this because I do on-site reports. And to take 450 photographs, I'll never be able to do an on-site report. Uh, and if I do, it'll take me all day. You know, so I like being able to do three inspections a day. So that's one of the reasons why I limit the photographs that I take. Now, when I get the occasional complaint, I believe the compliance, uh, the, the client, I'm sorry, is unreasonable. I'll turn it over to the insurance company. I mean, that's what we're obligated to do according to our insurance contract. But not till I've reminded them how everything is clearly documented in the report and suggest that they read it thoroughly. Okay. Since documentation prevails every time, I'm going to focus on continually evaluating, improving my writing methods uh, and my skills to you know improve what's actually written in the report so it can't be misinterpreted, misunderstood, or twisted after the fact. I'm going to use photos basically as a courtesy illustration. So I'll be documenting everything to the best of my ability, use the photos as a courtesy illustration, and maybe not try to use it so much as a proactive legal tool. So I'll keep the photos relevant, and I'll keep asking those qualifying questions. Why do you want more? How do you think they should look? You know, uh, how would a photo have helped? Um, and I'll keep that in mind when I'm out there doing the home inspections. Now, how does your client benefit from them? That's always a big one that I ask the realtors. And when we know more about why they need the photos, well, then we can make the, the photos more useful, more relevant, and be less likely to have them dismissed if we ever go to court. So thank you very much. That's all I've got. And I hope I didn't go too fast or too slow for everybody. <laughs> That was awesome, Derek. Thank you very much. Thank that you. Was, that was really good information. And uh, it gives us a chance to think about what we're actually doing. And you're right. Uh, pictures and the words pictures and videos are not in the standards of practice. Right. So they are um, up to the inspector to provide them. And uh, mm -hmm. out of courtesy is a really good uh, idea, uh, a good term when you do something just for courtesy. And, Absolutely. Uh, they're, they're just supplementary um, because what is the most important, what's most relevant um, is what you say and what you write and document. Um, so there was probably one thing, I just wanted to make sure everybody knows, uh, neither Derek or I are attorneys, but we Correct. do have um, an attorney available to InterNACHI members at nachi.org slash insurance. Mm -hmm. And that's Joe Deniler. And he handles uh, dispute resolutions. And I would say visit that page and uh, ask Ben Garrison and Joe Deniler. Um, do pictures and video help you uh, resolve disputes before they get too far into uh, being a formal complaint? So Wayne, you asked about InterNACHI's experience with photos and support of its inspectors and the buyback guarantee. I would mm -hmm. reach out to um, Ben Garrison and Joe Deniler, and that's at, I'll uh, put it in the chat. That's at nachi.org slash insurance. Um, Katrina uh, asks opinion on videos. Um, well, I always d do videos of my inspections. What do you think, Derek? You know, uh, I think videos are really cool. And again, if, uh, and I want to go back also to Lawrence's question about thermal images, because uh, I still need to address that one. Um, I think videos can be a really cool thing. I think they can be very helpful. Uh, I'm not so sure yet if there's enough evidence out there that they could help us, you know, if we ever do end up in court. And again, I'd get an attorney's opinion on it. Personally, I don't do videos. Um, uh, and again, maybe you can call me old school, but I'm going 30 years back to long before, you know, when I first started, uh, digital cameras were like $1,800 and they were cost prohibitive, you know, so I didn't do photo. You could do Polaroids. You remember those, but they were a buck a piece, you know, and they were 
lousy photos. So I'm not so sure. I think video is still kind of a new technology. And uh, Lawrence, <clears throat> all I can tell you about the thermal images is what I tell my students. Use it like you use your moisture meter. If you suspect a problem, get it out and use it. Either that or you're going to do an entire energy audit and do every you know surface area of the home with that thermal imaging camera. I think they're a great tool. I think they can give us a lot of insights into the home. Uh, I'm not so sure that I would use it as a CYA tool, um, but there's a lot of good uses for it. Yes, you know, m many of which we don't have time to get in here. So, you know, yep. use it selectively. Yep. Uh, and sometimes a home inspector um, is hired just to document with only pictures and mm -hmm. video uh, of the condition of the home, uh, mm -hmm. the condition of a roof. Uh, a bank phase inspection, what phase is the construction in, mm -hmm. and also pre-drywall to see the insulation. It's hard to right. write uh, what you see, especially when there's a uh, an insulation in the wall uh, installation problem. Exactly. Um, Lee, Lee asks, do you take more photos if you have an absentee client? Uh, I, I do, actually. Go ahead. Okay. And then right. I do video, and then I show the client um, the uh the inspection um summary essentially mm -hmm. and with pictures and video what do you think about that and and i think that's a great idea again i'm not using video at least not yet um when the um when the client can't be there i do take more pictures you know i'm not going to take for example a picture of every occurrence of wood rot i'll say here's an example of wood rot and it's in several places around the house read the report you know but uh, I'm not going to, you know, uh, just give them 10 or 15 photos either. If they can't be there, they deserve to have more photos. Yep. Um, Ryan asks our thoughts about whether or not software companies, inspection report software companies are built around pictures, uh, whether that's a liability or not. I think uh, you have to decide what your report, inspection report looks like. Essentially, you're mm -hmm. going to be ultimately judged upon the report. That's what they're buying. Yeah. Um, a little bit about the experience, a little bit about what you say during the inspection, but no one's going to remember any of that. Um, mm -hmm. They're only going to look at the text and the words that you use. Um, and so you could reach out to your inspection software provider and um, have that conversation with them about what do they think should be in the uh, report. Um, but your local business attorney, I always recommend this, have one available, um, hire them. They're expensive per hour but um, they can go over everything that you hand over to a client, including the inspection agreement, any resources that you reference, like the standards of practice that Derek has been talking about, and also your inspection reports. Have your local business attorney read over your inspection reports, mm -hmm. because uh, if you do uh, get into a um, uh, uh, dispute, um, I have, that's the one thing that your attorney is going to ask. What did you actually say in the report? And you're both going to read the report eventually. So you might as well um, read the report together with your attorney. And most, most of the time, your narratives, your sentences are already written. They're pre-written and you're just selecting them. So it's a good idea to look at your entire narrative library with your local business attorney. What do you think, Derek? You know, I, 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 I can't, uh, I agree with everything you just said, and I don't want to uh, say anything to that because you did such a good job of answering it. The only thing I'll add is that uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know, why do people install corrugated flexible uh, drain pipes underneath the sink if they're illegal? It's because Home Depot will sell them, you know? So it's kind of like the software, right? If home inspectors want more pictures, software developers will build their software around that. You know, and I think when you're reaching out to these software developers, find out, are they a home inspector? You know, have they done home inspections uh, and how much feedback have they gotten from home inspectors and have they have it reviewed by an attorney for the way they incorporate the pictures in there? I think those are all really good questions. Yes. Well, uh, Derek, it looks like you have a student, Mark. Uh, he thanks you. Uh, you were an instructor of his in 2019 in Washington and he enjoyed the class back then. And, and, and I remember you, Mark. Thank you very much. I'm glad to see that you attended. It's awesome to see you. Derek, thank you very much. High tech home inspection training. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for taking the time out in your busy schedule um, to, uh, to teach us during this live webinar something we should all be thinking about, about our inspection pictures and our inspection processes. It gives us food for thought. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Ben. It was great to be here. I hope I get to do it again sometime. All right, everybody. See you next time on the International Webinar. Stay safe and healthy. Bye. Bye-bye.